oh my gosh my hair looks really messy and my whole vibe isn't it but i just received this email from nus stating that my application result has been changed and i think this is my transfer application so i'm gonna open it and just record my really genuine reaction to this it's like 8 p.m at night on a friday night and they're sending me this So as you can probably already tell from the previous clip and as well as from the title of this video that I successfully transferred from quantitative finance to accountancy. Yay! So since I am getting this happy news, I also decided that I would make a video about it because during my application transfer process, I found another um, NUS transfer video by Nicole Bernadette really helpful and so I also want to help others who might be facing this same problem like us. First up we have my stats for NUS transfer they will consider two different grades first would be your high school grades that you use to apply to NUS when you started applying and the second one would be your GPA, CAP, or your university grades. So for my high school grade, I did IB and I got a total of 44. So as you can see, I basically got like the highest possible score for every single subject except English, in which I got like a six out of seven. So my IB score is um, very good like worldwide standard but in my opinion for like an international student going to NUS it would just be like average or slightly above average and then as for my university grade or my cap um, I before I assume my MA I couldn't I'm not really sure what my grade was I think it was around like 4.7 or something but my grade after I SU one of my math modules, it would be around 4.83. So yes, um, I, my grades were quite good also. And I think they were quite helpful in helping my transfer become successful. And next, we will be moving on to the essays that I wrote or my personal statement, you could say. So when I applied, I applied in the very short window after the semester. And I think um, the application changes, like requirements changes every semester or rather every time the window opens. Because I do have, um, I've consulted a few friends. One of my friends stated that she only had to write one personal statement. My other friend stated that she had to write one personal statement and one reason for application. And for me, I had to write one reason for application and then answer a few questions. Um, based on my knowledge, these questions are the same as the questions that new undergraduates had to answer during their application also. So the first one is the reason for application. Due to my strong interest in finance, programming ability, and perpetual engagement in math olympiads, Quantitative finance seemed like the perfect major. However, I do not aspire to be a quant and was overwhelmed by its mathematical rigor, leading to frequent breakdowns while watching math lecture recordings. The book Warren Buffet and the interpretation of financial statements introduced me to the intricacies of financial statements and how they affect investment decisions, which piqued my interest in accountancy. Furthermore, during my previous underwriting internship and current role as a credit analyst intern, I discovered a genuine enjoyment for analyzing financial data to assess corporations' credit worthiness. Hence, I applied for transfer due to my waning interest in math and newfound interest in accountancy. 
Moving forward, I plan to pursue the finance specialization alongside accountancy as my career aspirations lie in insurance, banking, and asset management. Okay, so now let's move on to the questions. The first question they had was, Tell us something you have done outside your, sc your school curriculum to prepare yourself for your chosen degree programs. For example, did you work in a relevant part-time job or did you take an online course? This summer, I am working as a credit analyst intern, which entails underwriting credit limits by analyzing the credit risk of buyers, both quantitatively, financials, and qualitatively, sector, country, trading experience, etc. I also work part-time as an underwriter intern during the semester. During the winter break, I studied a few Coursera courses, for example, Understanding Financial Markets, and I'm currently studying Financial Accounting Fundamentals. Furthermore, I've been reading my friends ACC1701 and ACC2702 notes during my free time. Okay, now we have the second question. Tell us about a time when you failed to do something on your first try but succeeded on subsequent attempts. How did you learn from your initial failure, change your approach so that you eventually succeeded? When working on credit limit application, most of my initial drafts were revised. Subsequently, I started revisiting my analysis after a few days to understand why the revisions were made and to take note of the underwriter's considerations. This allowed me to understand the various factors, other than buyer's financials, that influence limit decisions, whether the insured is a key account, parent or guarantor, trading experience, previous decisions, etc. While there's still a lot to learn, many of my drafts have been approved without changes now. The third question is, tell us something that is meaningful to you and why. My answer, social connections, particularly with my friends and colleagues as they enrich my life and impart invaluable les lessons. In CAP, my friends and I would share grievances and engage in late night conversations. They also supported me when I was struggling or feeling down, indirectly teaching me the importance of empathy and compassion. In Atreides, my colleagues and I would eat lunch together and exchange stories. They not only make my work life more lively, but also gave me insights into the professional world. Moving on to the fourth question. What is your proudest achievement? How does it display your commitment and how you have been enterprising? Please also explain how it exemplifies some of the five and US values of innovation Resilience, excellence, respect, and integrity. So unlike the others, I remember this one has like allowed more character. So you would realize that my answer would be longer. And here's my answer. I do not have any big achievements, but I am proud of myself for persevering through my second semester at NUS. Frankly, I took in too many commitments. I was interning part-time, overloading with 26 modular credits, tutoring three students, and acting as the finance and admin head of a committee in my residential college. Even though I was exhausted, I always delivered my best during my working days, committee meetings, and tutoring sessions. Excellence. I also didn't neglect my duty as a student and completed every single assignment on time without ever thinking of cheating. Integrity. In particular, despite knowing that I would SUMA2001, as I was continuously struggling to understand the concepts and had no interest in it, I refused to put in less than my best efforts. I watched all the lecture recordings, even if it meant doing so while crying, and studied seriously for my midterm and final exams. Although I made a mistake of overcommitting, I did not let it negatively affect my duties or group project members. I am proud of my resilience throughout that difficult time. 
Finally, we have the last question, which is, is there anything else about yourself which you want us to know? And here's what I answered. Transferring majors is a decision I've pondered on since February. I did not apply then because I wanted to do more research on the accountancy modules and career options, as well as consult several working professionals. Furthermore, I do not consider my year in QF as a wasted journey. Dabbling in math and computing has equipped me with transferable skills such as analysis and problem solving, as well as fostered my comfort with numbers and technology. Happy to discuss my transfer motivation further if needed. Now we are going to the second part of this video, which will be why I decided to change. So the first part that caused it all is math. I was struggling with my one and only math module. It was MA2001 Linear Algebra. And I think it's known to be very rigorous and it's known to be very hard, but I think I really had a lot of problems with it. I was trying so hard. I was trying my best, but I just couldn't understand the concepts well, and I didn't enjoy learning it. Most of the time for me, even though it, was, it would be like a hard subject, like CS 1010, I would be struggling, but at the same time, I would be enjoying the challenge. But for math, I started losing interest in math and I decided that um, if I couldn't survive perhaps the easiest math module that I would need to study for my QF degree, I wouldn't be able to survive QF and I should move. So after I established that will and strong decision to just move out of QF, the natural question is, of course, why accountancy and why not business administration with a finance specialization? Well, before that, let me just quickly like track back and see why I decided to choose QF in the first place. So for me, um, university education is not only about what I want to be in the future, but also like what are my interests and what skills do I want to gain from a university education. And I chose QF because QF is basically like a combination of math, computer science, and finance, which is what I love. But now my math interest is gone, so now it's just sci and finance left, but I realized that I wasn't able to really find any course that combines computer science and finance. And so I started asking myself, do I want to go into computing or do I want to go into finance? And somehow the answer was way easier than if I were to answer it like the, a year before. And it was that I would want to go into finance because although I enjoy coding and I find joy and satisfaction when my code works, I feel that I wouldn't want a career where all I do is like stare at a bunch of codes and try to fix bugs for like days sometimes if I can't find the solution. There was two obvious choices for people who wanted to go to finance, which is accountancy or business administration with a finance specialization. Um, even though accountancy is a sunset industry in Singapore in a way, because now a lot of junior auditors and accountants, especially in big four, they are overworked and underpaid at the same time. So, this degree in a way has lost its, its prestige and a, a lot of people just don't want to go into auditing and accountancy. And to be fair, I have the same notion. I didn't want to do auditing and I didn't really want to be an actual accountant. However, I value the skills that an accountant have and I think it would help me figure out what I want to do in the future. 
Furthermore, the accountancy degree from NUS would exempt you from like a few exams that you will have to take if you want to become a chartered accountant, while the finance specialization doesn't. So for me, um, I just chose in a way the path that I think would provide me the skills more rather than like a specific what I want to be or like a specific job that I'm chasing for. And honestly, though, if I didn't get into accountancy this semester, my plan was to apply for transfer to business administration with a finance specialization in the next semester. Because as you can tell, finance specialization only needs five modules. Well, accountancy has like 11 modules in NUS. So um, if I fail my transfer this semester, I wouldn't be able to graduate on time if I wanted to move to accountancy, but I would be able to graduate on time with, if I just do business administration. In a nutshell, basically the reason why I applied to accountancy is very similar to what I wrote in my personal statement or essay, which is that I have a waning interest in math and I realize I want to be, I I really, really want to be in finance. And even though I don't want to be an auditor or an accountant, I do value the skills that I will gain from this degree. And I like the fact that I get exempted from several examinations if I do decide that to become a chartered accountant. And in here, I will be ending my video. Thank you for watching, and I hope it was helpful. Bye-bye.